Should you use iodized salt if you have a thyroid problem? It depends on who you ask. If you look at the major league health websites on the internet, like the Cleveland Clinic, they will tell you that you should. But if you ask me, I would tell you that there are much better options available. And if you use these options, you'll have much better control over your iodine intake. Yes, iodine is critically important for thyroid function. And if you don't get enough, that can lead to serious problems. But there's no reason that you must get it from salt. Let me explain why. The first reason is that iodine deficiency isn't the same problem that it was 100 years ago. It was at this time that salt was iodized, meaning that it had iodine attached to it in response to a goiter endemic. A region in the United States lovingly referred to as the goiter belt had goiter rates as high as 30 to 40 percent prior to the 1920s. Because the thyroid requires iodine for the creation of thyroid hormone, a lack of iodine causes all sorts of problems including low IQs in babies who are born to women with this problem. The government responded by iodizing salt, which completely solved the problem. But that was a hundred years ago, and we live in a completely different world with completely different problems. I'm not even saying that iodized salt is necessarily a bad thing, and it still probably prevents iodine deficiency in a minority of the population. So it should probably stick around for this reason. But iodine deficiency is not something that most modern day thyroid patients have to worry about. In fact, what they should be worrying about is obtaining too much iodine. Iodine. It's far more likely nowadays that you're getting more iodine than you actually need, setting you up for iodine-related problems. Research has been clear over the last several decades showing that the more iodine that populations consume, the more likely these people are to experience thyroid problems like autoimmune thyroid disease in the form of Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, as well as an increased risk of thyroid cancer. There are many reasons for this, but probably the biggest is the fact that iodine is now found in cosmetic and beauty products. Even though microdoses of iodine are used in these compounds, they are placed on the scalp and skin where they can be absorbed systemically through the body. So even if you are somebody who is not consuming iodine-rich foods like seaweed or fish, there's still a good chance that you're getting plenty of iodine Iodine without realizing. As you might imagine, tracking iodine intake from all of these sources is actually very difficult. And as a result, you'll see some experts say that iodine deficiency is a big problem, while others say that iodine overdose is a big problem. My opinion is that the truth is somewhere in between, with some groups of people getting more iodine than they need and other groups of people not getting enough. But if it is true that there is a large portion of the population that's already getting more than they need, then consuming iodized salt for this group of people will just make problems worse. And even if you are somebody who thinks that most people aren't getting enough iodine, that's still not a good argument for consuming iodized salt. Which brings us to number two. There are better ways to get a more stable dose of iodine. Yes, iodine is important, and yes, consuming it has the potential to help you feel a lot better. I've said before, and it remains true to this day, that few treatments are as impactful on your thyroid as iodine supplementation. Even with all of this being true, there's no reason that salt has to be your primary source of iodine, and there are much better ways to get it. Salt simply falls short as a primary source of iodine for several reasons. The first is that your consumption of salt, and therefore iodine, will probably vary from day to day. When you look at the iodine content of salt, you'll find that roughly one eighth to one fourth of a teaspoon of salt contains roughly 45 micrograms of iodine. But let me ask you this, do you keep track of how much salt you consume each day? Could you tell me with any degree of accuracy what your total dose of salt is each day in terms of teaspoons or tablespoons? Do you know how much iodine you should be getting from all sources? If you're like most people, the answer is probably not. If you were somebody who wanted to get all of your iodine just from iodized salt alone, then you'd need to consume about three quarters of a teaspoon every single day. That's problem number one. The second problem is that the amount of salt you consume each day probably varies, and as a result, your iodine intake will vary as well. Your thyroid does have the ability to store iodine, so these daily fluctuations may not be as problematic as you might think. But because iodine intake is so important, and because it's such a Goldilocks nutrient, it's always better to know exactly how much you're getting. While salt definitely remains a better than nothing source of iodine, you can get much more stable levels just by taking a supplement. And the average person has a much better understanding of how supplement dosing works compared to food measurements. If I asked you to eyeball out three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, how close do you think you'd get to that target? Compare that to just taking one capsule of an iodine containing supplement every single day without having to worry about anything else. It's far easier to take a supplement than it is to measure your salt intake. Problem number three is that too much salt can cause other issues. We know that Americans are already consuming far more salt and sodium than they actually need. And the numbers are astonishingly high with over 90% of Americans consuming 
more sodium than they need every day. Most of this sodium comes from processed foods and from eating out, not from the table salt that you add to the food that you cook yourself. In fact, when you look at the numbers, roughly 70 to 90 percent of all sodium intake comes from these sources. The real kicker is that this extra sodium typically does not contain any iodine. So if you add iodized salt on top of the sodium that you're already getting from your standard diet or processed foods, you're putting yourself at needless risk for high blood pressure and heart problems. Thyroid patients, by virtue of how thyroid function impacts the heart and cholesterol, are already at risk for high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and heart disease. So adding extra salt on top of your diet only serves to make these problems worse. While this may sound complex, the solution is actually quite simple. First, avoid iodized salt and make sure to get your iodine from other sources. Second, get as much iodine as you can from real whole foods. Third, make up the difference with supplements if you need to. And four, make sure you get enough iodine every day, which happens to be around 150 to 300 micrograms. As an added bonus, if you give up iodized salt, you can actually start consuming tastier salts like Himalayan pink salt and Celtic sea salt. And if you're following my advice, that will force you to eat more real whole foods, which means you'll automatically have to cut out processed foods, which will positively impact your blood pressure and your heart health. Given that we live in a world that is completely different from 100 years ago, and that we now have access to amazing foods which are naturally high in iodine, there's simply no reason for you to rely on iodized salt as your primary source of iodine. This video really just touches the surface on the connection between iodine intake and thyroid health. And if you want to learn more about how much you should be taking every day and how that can positively impact your thyroid function, I'd recommend checking out this video next.